So there's an experience that I hear throughout, and I've read quite a few in the, the transcripts, and maybe a few people in this room have even had this, um, this idea, this more, more real than real experience. Like you go back to a space where you're source and you're looking, and then this is all the creation and the illusion. But also it seems like there's places that you can go to that are beyond that, where you're now, again, in this more real than real, but it's not your home or home space, but it's this whole other dimensional realm. So I'm kind of curious about your thoughts on the more real than real experience, the, the experience of the sense of this is the reality and this is the illusion, and just, hey, how do, you, how do you grok that here in this reality? You know, how do you bring any of those insights back? And then secondly, if there's places even beyond that that are more real than the more real, when you start really traveling into these sort of distant spaces, I'll let you go first. Um, well, you know, as, as far as uh, more real than real, you know, I, you know, I've come to the realization myself on a personal level that we're in a simulation, that this is a, it's like a big video game, and we're inside of it. It's kind of like Second Life or Super Mario with sentient beings inside of it. We're in simulations, embedded in simulations, embedded in simulations, because you know, even now, virtual reality, as it, as it gets extended um, within a, well, they actually have it now, but it's not out open to the general public because they got to be able to sell you four different levels of it. You know, you get the first one, and then by the time you work with that for uh, six or seven months, then they got to sell you the, the, the second, you know, division two and division three and things like that. But they have a virtual reality that's almost indistinguishable from regular reality as far as how it's you, you you connect with it so and then ultimately it will get rid of the hardware and be just a you know a, a download you know to your consciousness or to your retinas where you know the, the next thing they postulate is just projecting a frequency to your retina and you do the virtual reality experience and the augmented reality experience so they've done this with very high technology so that the creatures inside of the artificial reality have created a virtual reality inside of that and it gets and goes so far and extends so much that the creatures inside of that virtual reality which inside of the other virtual reality create a virtual reality and we're millions of <laughs> millions of sessions down into this virtual reality um, and uh, I think they say it's, we almost, it's almost like 99.99999 that we aren't in an original reality, but we're far down the line inside of this virtual universe. Um, I had a slide that I, you know, I, I didn't get to. It was Professor uh, James Gates, who used to be at the University of Maryland, was on the scientific board for uh, President Obama. He was the first person to get a PhD at MIT for super symmetry. Um, he had to teach his professors what super symmetry was so that they could give him his PhD in super symmetry because they were just all, they were just all string theorists. <clears throat> and the calculations inside of super symmetry, what he's found in the, in the, in the virtual space is that the same algorithms that run Facebook and Google, um, error correcting code algorithms, are the same algorithms that are embedded in the fabric of reality. And they had the, the um, uh, thing in New York with uh, uh, several scientists and physicists and things like that, and he presented, and he, and he said that my equations say that this is a matrix and that it's an artificial construct. Now, I, what I call the artificial arrangers of this, you know, I, I, I don't call them, them gods. I don't believe in creation. I believe in organizing those things that are always here and always have been here. You know, it's like, you know, you build a car and you say, I created this car, but you didn't create the substances that you organized to create the car. You just downloaded the configuration of putting this particular car together with the materials that are already here. So they took the materials that were already here and organized 
this reality of which we're in. It could be, a, it could be you organizing this illusion or from your higher self. It could be a creature from the future. It could be your great, 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 great grandson who wanted to see what, your, what the experience of, of was now of you being in life. And it's a fifth grade science fair project. And he's got all of the universes that we could ever imagine on, the, on a marble. And he's, put, and he's presented this to the, you know, to the uh, judges. And, you know, we all sitting here on this marble and it's a fifth grade science project that this kid has put together. And, you know, uh, once he's finished with it, you know, we, we may get blinked out because he drops the marble or forgets about it or throws it away or whatever. So, um, as far as uh, more real than real, most of my high dose trips have been more real than real. This seems like, you know, even when you're going up the roller coaster to the experience, because, you know, I look at DMT, DMT is, you know, you're already at the top of the roller coaster and zoom, you're going down. Psilocybin is, you gotta go start, you get in the seat, they put the, you know, the, the little thing on, your safety belt, and then you're going up, click, 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 and then you have a chance to go boom, go down and do the thing. You know, where DMT is just, you know, you already going down the hill. So, The reality of which we say, uh, look at as regular three-dimensional five-sense reality becomes pale inside of these other experiences. It just seems fake and artificial and plastic and things like that. And then you, you slowly get out of the, the plastic realm and then on the other end you slowly come back into the plastic realm where you really this is what this thing really is. We're just not here all the time. It gives you a chance to practice death. It gives you a chance to practice outside of the regular reality. So most of the trips are, um, you know, I'd say 85% of them, it's more real there than it is here. So how we're here in this world, right? And those realms are there. So how, what, what type of information, it sounds like to practice death, other things like that, but if we're kind of like working with integration, when people are like, oh, I had this experience, and what, how do I bring that, what, what information is being brought back to here, and what is this, how does that dynamic look when we're like living here in this realm, and we can get this great insight from these other places? Well, so, well, number one, I think that all the things that we, um, that we have here are brought back things from the other side. You see, we have, um, I was at a conference in uh, Ghana probably about 20 years ago, and there was a um, uh, Okomfo, which people would call a shaman. You know, shamans are in you know, Mongolia and stuff like that. But he's Okomfo, and he was talking about instruments. And he said that there is a world or a place of instruments there's a drum planet, and uh, it's a popular drum. Some people may know about it. It's called a djembe drum. The djembe drum was downloaded to the earth through the utilization of hallucinogens. It was, you went to the, to the that's how the piano got here, that's how the harp got here, that's how the trumpet got here. You know, of course, human beings will extend that, you know, you got a harp, you know, a, a piano, I mean, a piano is nothing but a harp set on its side and knocked with hammers. But the original harp came from one of these music instrument planets where the instruments talk to one another, they have consciousness, they have children, all of those different type of things. You know, the violin is the baby of a bass fiddle and a cello. You get this little baby violin. But the djembe drum was downloaded as a war drum in the Senegambia. And how they did it was through the trees. The trees on the drum planet sent the signal to this dimension. 
and the drum was a living entity inside of the living tree. So the priests, what they did was, they took the entheogens and went out in the forest and they saw in a particular tree the drum. And they asked the, dr the tree, can we have the drum out of the tree? So they cut the tree and then they knocked away the unessential portions of the wood so that the drum would be liberated from the tree and be in its form. It's the same thing that um, Michelangelo um, did with David. David was in the stone already. He was a utilizer of entheogens. He went into the quarry and he looked at the walls of the quarry and when he saw David in the quarry, he said, cut this piece out for me. So they cut that piece out. Then he took it to his workshop and he chipped away all of the pieces of the stone that weren't David and liberated David from the stone because David was already in the stone trillions of years before the formation of this universe. The same thing with the drum, the djembe drum. It's liberated because these things are multidimensional. And all of the things that we have are things that are brought back. That's what they're doing in Silicon Valley. They're bringing things back. Computers are an extension of the mycelial neural network of the earth. How the internet is put together is a reflection of the mycelial network of the earth. Cheers are liberated from the trees. Now, of course, we utilize plastic, which was by another entheogenic user, the greatest scientist of the United States, George Washington Carver, who was also America's most prominent mycologist. You can find his mycological um, collection in the Bronx Botanical Gardens and also somewhere in Colorado, where they call him the man who talked to plants. He was a former slave whom some say was um, castrated because the people who owned his family, the Washingtons, him and his brother were growing up at the same time as their daughter and they didn't want these two black boys to be fully male along with their young white daughter so they castrated them both. George Washington Carver put his energy into talking to plants, which he developed plastic, which he developed um, things out of the peanut. He saved the economy of the South by dealing with the boll weevil by moving from uh, cotton uh, to other agricultural products. But he talked to plants because he encountered the mushroom and the mushroom gave him thousands of different formulas that he made from the peanut, of which he then gave to Henry Ford, which gave him the ability to build Ford Motor Company because the patents were given from George Washington to Henry Ford, but the seminal knowledge and information of how to make these thousands of plants from the peanut and the sweet potato was because he was eating the mushrooms, talking to the plants, and the plants told him how to develop these things. So everything that we get, just because the, the chairs are made out of plastic now, doesn't mean that that's, that's just an extension of the material from what was originally the wood that was downloaded from the cheer planet. So yes, that's more real than real, and yes, we do bring things back. Okay, wow. <laughs> Fantastic. But there, there, there are so many different levels, you know. I, I was now talking about something very, you know, real, not real. Um, I was thinking simply, Okay, in our normal perception, we, we look at this room, you look at you, and we, our foveal vision just go, boop, 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 you know, just like that. The rest of it is filled out by our brain, so that the peripheral vision. So, so really, this is an illusion, you know. It is, you know, the, our brain is created, the, the, the blind spot, we don't see it, you know, it is, you know, it is filled. Um, it is partially, because also, also the, the, the 
partially because of our crystalline, we are able to focus only on one, you know, at the moment, and we are moving like this. In this other realm, there is not this, uh, this um, limitation. You are seeing fully completely, you know, there is not through any mechanism, you know. So you're, you're getting the imprint directly into, into, uh, into your occipital um, region. You are getting the, the, and so therefore it's much more vivid, much more uh, real, you know, in a way. But it has happened to me that then, then I get into another place in which this, you know, it is like the illusion that this is, you know, like you're talking. So that you say, there is another one, you know. And, and, and then when you get into those places, I mean, it's like, wow, I didn't have no idea, you know, there is much more than, you know, than before. I have not been taking this huge, you know, I guess it will go forever, you know, I don't know. So it's, yeah. Um, now, for me, you know, okay, these are anecdotes, and I, I like to think about it, and I wrote a chapter in this ayahuasca reader about my own little experiments, you know. Like, for instance, I don't know if you have done this, um, uh, you are with the eyes closed, and if you move like that, and whatever you see moves with you, then, okay, that is quite, quite um, low, um, let me see, how can I put it? Um, it's moving with you. It's like if, like a projection somehow. It is like, but you can be in a place where it is totally three-dimensional, totally. So that you move like that, and it, I look at you, and I look at the chair. And, you know, it's completely three-dimensional, and up and down as well. So these are, and with ayahuasca, this happens to me quite often. And I'm curious, you know, if other people have experimented with this. I have a, a chair that I can, you know, go around, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah, so that I can have, yeah. Because sometimes something is happening here, and then they are going behind, and I want to see what is going on there behind. Sometimes a, a big serpent comes, you know, great, you know, go around, you know, just parading very slowly, beautifully. Okay. So what else I was going to say about about that? Yeah, well, well. <laughs> it will come. It will come back. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. No, yeah. Now I got there. Is it, okay. So what do you do with all this information? You know, what do you do? Okay, artists, you know, can bring it back. Musicians, architects, etc. In my case, what I'm learning is. Uh, Perhaps animism, you know, that everything is alive. Yeah. Every intelligence is everywhere. And, and, and for me, the most urgent thing to do now is, is to bring this idea. It's so difficult, you know, when you see people in the, in the, in the metros and, you know, I mean, how are you going to reach them and say, you know, we live in an intelligent planet. Everything is intelligent because we are su surrounded by things, you know by objects, you know, there are not so many ob subjects anymore. If you go out in the forest, you know, there, it's all full of subjects, you know, it's full of people, you know, like, like the, 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 the Amazonian, they used to say that, you know. Uh, even my, my teacher, I, I, uh, when it was uh, cooking ayahuasca, the bubbles, you know, tuk, 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 he said, you see, these are people. Everything is alive, everything is, you know, you're receiving messages from everything. And, and, and so, so they have a, a, a relational, relational epistemology. Everything, you are not only observing things, but everything is talking to you. And that's what the shaman, you know, they are able to talk to the animals, they talk to the, with the winds, they took, you know, so, so how to bring this back, you know, uh, to, uh, and I see this as, as the only, nearly the only solution, because, you know, we are going down the hill so fast, you know, it's just like, you know, I, I was, pretty, you know, I, I gave a talk, I prepared some, some terrible slides uh, one and a half years ago from terrible things that are happening in the world. It's nothing compared to what is happening now. I mean, there was just like <laughs> periods, you know, I mean, the fires, you say, in Africa, the Amazon in Africa, three times more in, in Australia, nine times even more than the Amazon. I mean, you know, the planet is just going so fast. So what can we do? How can we bring back this sacredness, you know, the, the, to the, you know, uh, 
that we are in a living place that, that is full of intelligence, that we have so much to learn, and it's so fun to be here, you know, so. Yeah. Well, well, real quick, I think uh, Niles Bohr and Einstein had a, a, a session, a, a debate on dealing with reality. And um, Einstein said to Niles Bohr, I'd like to think, well, it goes back to the adage of if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to experience, it doesn't make any sound. And they had this debate, and Einstein said, I'd like to think, if I'm not observing the moon, that the moon is still there. And now, as Bohr said, according to quantum mechanics, the moon is not, it's not there. It's only through observation that it becomes, uh, it, that it, it brings itself into what we call reality. Um, so, in, in dealing with the, the quantum world, consciousness generates the reality of which we exist. In other words, when I, when I leave out of this door, and get on the plane, go back to Detroit, I no longer, to you, I no longer exist. It's only when I come back and you experience me that I exist again, but it's the same thing for me. And it's going on on a quantum level where reality is go going in and out as we experience. That's the whole um, uh, collapse of the wave into the particle where things become solid. And uh, science is telling us that even though we see this as solidity, it's 99% space, it's, no, it's nothing there. And so when we, you know, m many people, like in the Matrix, many people, um, when the little guy, the computer guy says, um, I got something to show you, and he hooked up where this woman in a red dress was walking down the street, and he said, you know, I just made it because she looks good, you know, so, when we see, many times when we see people, you know, maybe the mailman or somebody just walking down the street that you don't know, when they walk down the street and they turn the corner, they no longer exist. They were only part of the entertainment factor for you not to be bo bored with the loneliness of that you are the only thing that exists. As a matter of fact, when they turn the corner, even around the corner doesn't exist. Because that is how reality is working in the, the quantum realm and the subatomic realm. Now that goes back to what I said earlier, that everything is one, but then you have these standalone systems that are totally not connected to that. Food for thought. <laughs>